Hi, this is H. Victoria Hogger Actress, and I'm flash chatting today with you about my novel, Walking in the Kutsu. The cover was done by my nephew, Larry Anthony, terrific artist and a terrific person. Now, we're going to talk today about the positive aspects of Kutsu Vines. Now, we talked before about how, what a terrific ground cover it is because it's totally and completely invasive. It covers everything and smothers everything it touches. Like, eh. <laughs> Love that. We always call, uh, tell people who visit the South, be sure to sleep with your windows closed because the Kutsu Vines, <laughs> Kutsu Vines be coming and get you. I love that. I love Southern folklore. It's really, it's really great being a storyteller. Now, one of the positive aspects of Kutsu Vines we're going to be talking about today is how um, it brings positive things to our lives. So the one was said it brings uh, wonderful uh, minerals to our soil, although it kills everything in its sight. It also <laughs> It also um, is a wonderful shade plant. If you want to use it as a shade plant, people have done that. Like make a shade of kutsu vines and it covers the problem is that it'll cover your whole house <laughs> in no time at all. A couple of seasons of kutsu, you, get, you have a problem on your hands. So people learn the hard way how to do that. Now, there are some medicinal uh, qualities uh, and the advantages of using kutsu vines. And I'm not sure which part of the plant that we have to use to do this. Now you have the, the flower, you have the pods, which are like string beans, but they're heavier, thicker, but they're covered with little hairy things on, little dark hairy things on it. <laughs> and the underside of the leaves, which also have the same uh, under, uh, cr creepy crawly little hair underneath it. Now you have the vines, which are absolutely the strongest vine I've, I know of. I don't, and then I'm limited to Georgia and just household plants. But anyway, it's a really thick, thick, strong vine. I know that because I used to pull it out of my mother's garden as a child. So I know that it is very, very strong. Now you have the, the vines and then you have the, the root system, which looks like a normal root, but you also have when the roots get older, they form this bulb. They just like explode. They start out very small, and then they ju it just grows into a huge, huge, huge round mass. And that I, they use for making cloth and also making paper. Fascinating because I love the idea of doing that. That's one of the most ancient arts in the world, which Africans were the first to do that. So I'm very proud of that history of our our people. It's really terrific. Now, another aspect of uh, kutsu vine that is a good thing for us is that it's known to do to cure the he migraine headaches and cluster headaches. It's known to increase your digestive system and your ability to di digest food. At the same time, it is an appetite suppressant. So people want to lose weight, I guess, and stop eating so much. <laughs> Make yourself some kutsu tea. <laughs> which people do make a lot of tea, jellies, and uh, they also use a starch, use it as a starch when they use thickening, if they want to thicken something like you use for, what's it, the uh, cornstarch, they use it like they do cornstarch. And the other thing is that they also use it for cosmetic uses, soap, lotions, cleansers, you know, all kinds of things for the skin. So, Kutsu Vine had some wonderful qualities. <laughs> so, I have a list here I want to read to you uh, the medicinal uh, advantages of Kutsu Vine. So, we have, it's an anti-inflammatory, and people use potuses to put to, out of the root system, I think they beat it up or make a powder out of it, um, not a powder, but a like a mashed potato type of thing, and they uh, put it, wrap it in some white cloth and put it on your skin or whatever if you have any inflammation anywhere and it's known to to work I think I know I heard <laughs> so it also is supposed to be good for allergies diarrhea tendinitis vertigo uh, it also cleans the liver and it's also known to help with people suffering from 
Alzheimer's. And the thing that I remember from my childhood that it was good for hangovers. People would make a, a like a, a drink or something, and they would give it to people for hangovers. And they say if you drink enough of it, it would cure you of alcoholism. Okay, maybe <laughs> I don't know. Okay, now um, in cooking, we use we make teas out of out of it, and we also make drinks. And uh, there's a dessert that I remember uh, uh, years ago hearing about. It's like a, it looks like it's white, and it kind of resembles Jello. But they make that, and that they say tastes like grape jelly. I never tried it, but it takes on the characteristics of the blossom. So if the blossom smells like grape jelly, it's gonna it's gonna taste like grape jelly. And if that blossom smells, it's gonna uh, smells like bubble gum. Then that dessert would would be the same thing. The same thing with the teas and other things that you do. With with it takes on those those characteristics of the variety of katsu vines because there are many varieties. Okay, and it has grown all over America since eighteen <laughs> since eighteen uh eighteen seventy six. So it went from the miracle vine to being something quite enormous to deal with in this country. So I appreciate you listening in and listening to the uh, <laughs> the characteristics and usage of katsu vines. So um, I wish you happy holidays, and uh, I hope you all are well. Take care. Take care of your family. Love someone special, and love to you. Oh, but before you go, push the like button, please, and the uh, subscribe button. That'll guarantee that we can continue doing this, okay? Take care. Love you.